Uh, this is question six now from the June 2010 BY1 paper. Uh, this question is all about uh, biological molecules, really, uh, in particular uh, lipids and carbohydrates. Okay. Um, so the question starts off with a simple one word answer, really. Name the cell organelle, which is the site of energy release in a mammal. Uh, that's the mitochondrion. Okay, simple as that. Um, so uh, we'll uh, write that in later. Let's have a look at uh, part B. It gets a bit more uh, interesting here in part B. Uh, you've got a table now that's looking at um, carbohydrates and lipids. And basically how much energy is released from each of those molecules. Um, the metabolic water produced, I'll explain what that is in a moment, and the oxygen consumed. Okay, uh, so we've got all uh, all the units as well for these various um, uh, aspects here, but energy released. Um, now remember, you've got to know about the uh, little statement, little fact that uh, fats or lipids uh, release about twice the amount of energy for the same mass as carbohydrates. Uh, and that's basically what that data is showing you there. That's approximately um, twice the amount of energy there uh, being released by the lipid compared uh, to the carbohydrate. Okay. Uh, metabolic water, okay, uh, basically during respiration where glucose <clears throat> uh, and other molecules are converted into ATP. You do get the release of water and that's what the metabolic water uh, re refers to there. So you get 0.56 uh, for carbohydrate and 1.07 uh, for the lipid. And lastly it's looking at the oxygen consumed. Uh, so we're actually looking at uh, aerobic respiration here because uh, that uh, requires oxygen. So you can see you need, uh, or the oxygen consumed then for the carbohydrate is 0.83 and for the lipid it's 2.02. .02. Okay, uh, so it's an important table uh, to understand and uh, you know you need to make some sort of basic um, uh, analysis of that table like, like I did about the uh, amount of energy released for the carbohydrate and the lipid. Uh, you should be, you know, um, looking out for, for little things like that, making some comparisons between the two uh, molecules being investigated. Okay, um, so let's move on to the, the question then, uh, part one. With reference to the figures in the table, all right, so you need to use the figures, state one advantage <clears throat> and one disadvantage of storing lipid storing lipid rather than uh, carbohydrates. Okay, remember that both carbohydrates and lipids are actually uh, energy storing uh, molecules. Okay, so what's the advantage of storing a lipid over that of a carbohydrate? Simple advantage, you get more energy released um, with a lipid than a carbohydrate. OK, uh, but that's not really um, a suitable answer there. You have to be a little bit more thorough with that answer. And it goes back to that uh, that important statement. Um, basically, you get uh, more energy released from the lipid for the same uh, mass of carbohydrate. All right, so if you look at the table, um, the units now, I haven't talked about the units so far, but this is where they become relevant. Uh, the units they use in here are kilojoules per gram of food. All right, so they're looking at the energy released. The units for energy are kilojoules, and they're looking at the energy released per gram. All right, so they've standardized their results to look at per gram of food. So your answer should reflect that, all right, if you were thorough in your uh, answer. So I would say then that the uh, lipid produces a higher energy yield per gram uh, of food. Okay. Uh, the disadvantage, uh, maybe a little bit more tricky now about the disadvantage. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is the metabolic water released a disadvantage? Mm, no, I don't think so. It's actually to do with the oxygen consumption. Okay, um, it takes a lot more oxygen 
um, to release the energy from a lipid as it is from a from a carbohydrate so I think the disadvantage there is is the fact it uses more um, oxygen okay uh, right so I'll type those answers in along with the uh, the answer to the the first part part a okay then so I've typed in the answer to part a which is a mitochondrion and uh, I've typed in the advantage there um, the lipid releases a higher yield of energy per gram of food okay and the disadvantage more oxygen is required for respiration using a lipid okay then um, suggest two other reasons why a mammal uh, stores a lipid okay um, this is quite straightforward really what the examiner is getting at here is what functions uh, does a mammal use for stored lipids all right um, so instead of just saying what are the the uh, functions uh, of uh, lipids in mammals he sort of worded it as suggest two other reasons why mammals store lipids um, so obviously they store them for an energy uh, uh, source but the other reasons you know there's many okay you can have your uh, heat uh, insulation your electrical insulation um, it is actually a better source of metabolic water of course because if we go back up to the table um, we've got that middle column there about metabolic water uh, so you could have could have mentioned that all right so it is actually a source of water uh, for mammals um, the other things of course would be buoyancy there are aquatic mammals that require buoyancy and uh, again protection of uh, body organs all right so there's quite a lot of uh, uh, uses that you uh, you could have put in there there we go I've decided to put heat insulation and buoyancy uh, for my answers okay then part C um, the potato contains stored starch and protein okay state two uses for the protein in the growing uh, plant all right so we only have to look at the protein here uh, basically proteins are there um, to to help growth and repair really uh, most of our uh, uh, bodies including uh, plants okay uh, contain protein um, so they're very much there uh, for growth uh, repair of organisms in terms of in terms of the potato plant though uh, it's actually growth of perhaps the stem and the roots I think instead of just saying growth um, it's important to actually state uh, what would be growing uh, in the potato plant okay uh, repair I've said uh, new tissue manufacturing okay so that could be put in there um, another uh, one would be uh, the production of enzymes okay all enzymes are proteins okay so again two reasonably easy answers to uh, put in there uh, there you go I have put uh, growth of roots and stem and uh, the manufacture of enzymes okay part C2 then the starch and protein must be hydrolyzed before being used by the potato plant explain what is meant by the term hydrolyzed okay uh, hydrolyzed um, is all to do with breaking of bonds okay all the biological molecules you've studied um, join together by a condensation reaction all of them okay so the reverse of a condensation reaction is known as a hydrolysis reaction okay so hydrolyzed means breaking uh, a bond okay and it involves the chemical addition of water all right you have to re-add the water in order to break that uh, that bond okay uh, but it's always best to state it's the chemical addition of water okay and that then will get you uh, your two marks there you go there's my answer um, uh, one sentence hydrolyzed means the breaking of a bond by the chemical addition of water simple as that okay uh, the last part then of question six name the products resulting from the complete hydrolysis of starch and protein now what they mean by the complete hydrolysis okay they, they've got the, the word complete in bold the complete hydrolysis means um, breaking down um, or hydrolyzing starch and protein 
to its individual monomers, all right? Because you could partially break down starch to maltose, maltose being a disaccharide, all right? But that's not the complete hydrolysis of starch because you are not left with individual monomers, okay? So the, the complete hydrolysis of starch would actually uh, leave you with uh, glucose molecules, okay? Um, if you wanted to in this one, you could put the isomer of glucose, all right? Remember, alpha glucose is found uh, in starch. Um, the complete hydrolysis of proteins then would give you amino acids, all right? So just be aware of that. Again, it's, it's all to do with reading the question properly. Um, and understanding what the examiner means, okay? Uh, so complete hydrolysis in this case means um, what individual monomers are left that actually make up starch and protein, okay? There we go. So uh, that's uh, question six completed. Uh, if we have a quick look at uh, the mark scheme, there it is. Um, I don't think there's anything unusual in this mark scheme. Okay, you can look uh, look at the marking points yourself. Um, there's the advantages and disadvantages. Functions of uh, uh, the lipids there. Okay, scrolling down. Um, function of proteins for part C. Um, what does uh, hydrolyzed mean uh, is there. And um, lastly, uh, glucose and amino acids being the, uh, the products of complete hydrolysis of starch and uh, proteins. Okay, that's the end of question six.